Andrew brought us over here to his buddy's place, A and E uh, Machine and Gear. So we're gonna take a look around. He's got like a uh, old school machine shop here. He's got some modern stuff, some CNCs. He's got old tools. Started right over here. Eric's over here trying to uh, snag up my my good finds. Yeah, give me that. Two of those. Six of those. Look. Look what he's got hiding right over here. You guys know what that is, right? Shouldn't even have to tell you by now. Beautiful machine. It's the uh, standard model. It is a universal table. 20 inch Cincinnati Shaper. Very cool. Yeah, we just came in and we're gonna start taking a look around and seeing what all he's got here, man. And we're just we're just looking. We're not here to buy or anything like that. So let's uh let me get my light out. We'll take a look at this Cincinnati here. He says it's a good machine. It's it looks like it's been well taken care of. He does not use it very much, but he says he'd like to keep it so just for nostalgic pur purposes or one day he might have that one job that he wants to set up and do on there. Oh, these are, this is, is that what I the want. Pull brooches are. Yeah. Oh, is this the drill bit grinder here? Yeah, but this thing is amazing. Jimmy, watch this. You, you got to get one. Yeah, I haven't seen these before. What was the make on this? Oliver, I think. Yeah, this was an Oliver. Like, if you don't have one of these, you should kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll work on uh, finding one before we kill ourselves, man. Yeah, yeah, drink yeah, more, yeah. Eric, I think. So you just pull up the edge to that stop. Mm -hmm. All right, let's line your fluid up there. And, and this is actually 118 degrees. And okay. It's set up for 135, so it'll okay. It'll take a minute before you make full contact. But I know he won. Watch how amazing he's like this is amazing. And it's running up very close. And it starts to. I love how it does both flutes in the oh, same yeah. operation. So you don't have to pull it out and flip it over to the other side. So you're hand feeding it in. Yeah. So do you set a stop once you get it? Oh, well, I'm used to just doing one set at a time. So you don't have yeah. to set a stop. No, it's just until you know you're making full contact and you just look at the tip of the, the flute of that drill and once you're past the dull yeah. part, just yeah. stop and uh, pull. This drill's busted. So it's, that's why we never sharpen it, but this is just for an example. Right. Like I said, it'll take a minute because it was, the drill was 118 degrees. Yeah, that's cool. Are you changing the degree on it? Yeah, you can right here. You can swivel this. He was set up for 135 degree, like a split point. Yeah. Will, it, will it do a split point also? No. Okay, so it's just for like a jobber. Yeah. That's all I need, good old jobber. It'll, it'll put a hole in there as good as any. Like you gotta go, Jimmy. <laughs> Are we, we putting you behind, Jimmy? No, he can leave at any time. <laughs> yeah, it's close. You gotta pass all the downtown crap, man. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not far now. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. This is amazing. Yeah, let's see this thing. Be warm. Oh yeah, I like it. Look at that. All right, so uh, how much is it? <laughs> what do you want for it? Just, just start getting out hunters, and I'll tell you when to stop. All right, man. <laughs> Let me. Ab I love Abby. It's a horse jacket. Did you buy Yeah, she's got it. There, there's you a, buy the shaper. There's a few things here that aren't for sale, and that's probably one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, if you sell that, you get eight. Yeah, you, you get eight and die. You get yourself like, you get eight and die. Anybody in the shape? <laughs> you probably want to. We're working on a deal. We're working on it. Adam, look what I spotted for you. What, what we got? What we got next here? 
spotted it. You know what I spotted. What? What'd you spot? Right there on that machine. Oh, the Eagle. Oh, I didn't know what you were looking at. Oh, really? Yeah, the Eagle 66. <laughs> That's one of the, see if you if you find the 33 though, call it'll you. it'll be like this. Call you immediately. I'm just saying, man. Call if you find one, Eagle Oiler Hotline. If since you don't have one, if you find one, just don't even worry about what the cost is. Just pick it up and buy it, man. <laughs> you you reached out on that Eagle Oiler. <laughs> wow, look at the gear hobbing over here. Barbara Coleman machines. This is cool, man. You got the twins. These are exact, exact same machines here. Very cool. Number 12, type A. Awesome. I touched it. You're leaving, huh? Yeah. You're headed back to the frozen no, uh, man, northern man. tundra, huh? Yeah, it's literally yeah, snow covered. It's a disaster. See you, brother. Good to Great see you, man. Later, dude. Uh, we're yeah, we're in the same. <laughs> we're in the same. You have a safe Check flight. Check out on YouTube. All right. Cool. Thank, you. Thank you. We enjoyed our time with you guys. We'll, we'll see you next year at your place at the Maker yeah. Shop. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, yeah. Here's this pull brooch. All of the tooling for it. Some of the cutters. You can do keyways. You can do squares, hex, any shape you want. Just mount your workpiece here on this end, hook your cutter to it, and the hydraulic ram pulls the cutter back through your workpiece and cuts the internal shape. Such as, say you wanted to do this right here. That's uh, that spline, that's an easy way to do it on a pull brooch machine right there. Let's see what else you got. These are, these are, yeah, these are some smaller uh, gear hops here, right? More Barbara Coleman's. This is neat. They are experienced. <laughs> what are these? Is this a? Uh, is this thing. this is another hob right here, right? Yeah, another, another fellow. That's uh, a shaper. Yeah, this is the shaper style. So it just uh, you know it's got a reciprocating. It, it will do internal and external. Cool. Splines. That's what the other guy right here is too, yep. the fellows. War finish. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. So Eric, <laughs> Eric was just talking to us the other day about that. Like part of the war finish was uh, mm -hmm. it gets like, like one coat of primer okay. and like two coats of paint and that's it and ship it, it out of there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, like the finish on it was less than you know the, the okay. than the pre-war machines. Right. Trying to get them turned around in a quicker, a quicker manner. Forty-seven. Cool. Where do you go from about 16 inch diameter to <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> Are you serious? That you look at that little guy right there. That little, that's a little shaper right that there. That one did it there. Yeah. Dang. Hey, you need one of these. What is that? It's a brown and sharp gear checker. Oh yeah. I got one. Yeah. You see the <laughs> see the little gear. Wow. The radio knob. This here is. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. So it's just it's just knurled for uh, to catch your fingers. No, it's a, it goes in there. That's, oh, that's this a, one yeah, here. That's an ID spline too. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you do the the ID also. Mm -hmm. You do it here. Yep. Boy, he does everything, man. That man does everything. Nice. Oh, another little gear you made. <laughs> Look at that guy. It's for a little tiny gearbox. Oh, if I made that, it would be ruined. Instantly. <laughs> the small end that was over there, the big end that was over here. Andrew, the power hammers can't make everything, man. I know, it's just like, <laughs> you can't squish something like that. <laughs> now you can forge it up on the power hammer and then come over here and cut it on the uh, yeah. on yeah. the fellows. So this is all like tooling that goes with yep. the machines here? Yeah, those are all gauges, different splines. Okay. So somebody will bring something in and if they're not sure what it is, just break out the gauges. Try it till you 
Got you. you know, okay. You can, you'll learn to look at it and, okay, I think this is probably what it is. Come grab the gauge. Yeah, yeah sure enough, that's it. Show yeah. them how this thing works. For the decimal chart. You need that? They're all over the <laughs> They're everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. yeah. If you got any you want to sell, man, I'll buy them from you. Okay. <laughs> that one is nice, but it is clean. That's in good shape. Look at that. Yeah, this is the one. Y'all must keep that one, like, wiped off. It's just in the corner. Nobody, you know, every, all the other ones have black marks all over them where you... Get the milling department over here. The Monarch 10 double E. How about the other Monarch? Yeah, you got another Monarch back here. Adam was gonna stop it. Beautiful. Love the sheen of a well used Monarch lathe. Decimal chart, Union Twist Drill. You see how I, I love, they, they're like me. They got charts everywhere. You got your decimal charts, you got all kind of charts everywhere at your disposal so that you can quickly just come up, reference, look, Woodruff Key Dimensions right there. Another decimal chart. I, I love the ones with the uh, the Texas on there. That's pretty cool. And he's got another. Looks like the same one over here. So cool. I don't know if we got to see the uh, Cincinnati mill here. Yeah. Let me let me here. Let me show them. See, I just. You spotted the uh, Gerstner. This is the leather wrap Gerstner. And see, I was just showing them. You pull this out here and uh, pull the lid. And you can see up inside there. See? Built by H. Gerstner and Sons, Dayton, Ohio. That's how you know you got a, a genuine. Look at the finish on it. So cool. I love it. This is the sink I want in my shop right here. This is what you want. You want to come up to it, and boom. People, people freak out when you tell them that's the urinal. They're like, what? <laughs> Dang. Oh, the turn master. Okay. Right. One thing we like about it is the size of holding it. Yeah, it's got three inch holes. There was a Mazak blade in that shop. Mazak 8 Really? Nice blade, but it needs a little work. Dirty, really dirty. Yeah, but it's huge. Looks like you're uh, sawing and uh, you got a belt sander over there too. Yeah, I love Bill, this saw. Man. Bill Johnson. Thing. Yeah. Well used. Oh yeah. Use it, use it every day, it looks like. Damn near. Got a roll in. What is the old belt sander here? That like a uh, Delta or Rockwell maybe? There's a tag on the back. I think it's yeah, a... it is Rockwell. That's what I figured. Yeah. Graziano yeah. Italian. Is that good? This it's one here? Yeah, it's all master. Man, it runs good though. Real good tolerance. Sag 12. Got him a big, well, I wouldn't call it too big, but red alarm drill press starter over here. Cincinnati, Bickford. Uh, we had got head off of it. Black and Decker mag drill sitting here on it. That's the same one Andrew's got at his shop there. That's cool. So, I don't know, it appears to be about a, maybe a three footer. You'll see all the uh, the flaking on there. There's a Logan. This is where, this is where they get their heat set right, right here, yeah, and then they do their welding. Good night. Yeah, that's what it, it was. Looks like it has AIDS. 
It's got something. warts all over it. Or man. warts, yeah. I'm burn them off. I guarantee that's what they were doing. They were striking their arc to get their heat set on the machine. That's and an then old they... one, too. <laughs> it's back here at his uh, welding department. Look at the old fridges. Is this where you keep the rods? Yeah. That one's empty. He's wow. got another one there. But uh, check out the old Miller. So this is a uh, SR200. And you got the remote plug right there, but he's only got it set up for uh, stick welding though. You guys ever seen a grinding machine this size? So it's a 300 inch chuck. Supposed to be the, uh, the, the biggest, biggest in the world this size. It's just like a, it's uh, just like a, it works like a Blanchard. So there's a Blanchard grinder right there. 300 inch chuck. We're in like a three or four story building here. It's just massive. It goes down that way and it goes down again. This is all part of the grinder. Holy There's like cow. There's two swimming pools over there for the cooler. Oh, really? Yeah, like the size of the swimming pool. Look, there's the back of it. That's the coolant tank? That one and that one. Wow. Barrel Betts. There you go. There's the make. I think it has several 600 horsepower electric motors in front of it. Wow. Grinders everywhere. All the employees here are cross trained on every machine. Oh yeah? So they're, cool. they're not just tied to one machine. Yeah. The big uh, surface grinder back here. This is the guy that runs the big machine, the big grinder. Okay. So you know him? Yeah. Another big Blanchard. This is the kind of stuff that you can put a machine tool, like a lathe bed in, and do stuff like that. Or any kind perfect. of thing. Oh yeah. Another big Thompson grinder there. He was just running that. Yeah. That's a that's a nice one there. How about all the magnets hanging off these frames? Oh, I love it. Picking up all the plates. Yep. They got 
two of them up there. They got the big boy and then the smaller one. The small one's 10 ton. That one's a 10 ton there. This one's got to be like 50 ton. This is what I want, right? Everybody knows. This is what I'm, this is what I'm shooting for. The machine or the building? I want the building with the, with the bridge frame. Oh, yeah. That's what I want. That way you can back anything in here. It don't matter if it's a machine yeah. or a tool or anything. You can just pick it up. If you this need to pick your trailer up. You can back in. Yeah. I want to show you guys this really, really nice handmade wooden case that was uh, that was built for me by uh, Tab Adams. Cross cut vintage designs over on Instagram is uh, how you can find him. He is a uh, woodworker and does a lot of uh, one-off and custom woodworking uh, creations over there. A lot of um, you know furniture type creations. And recently on uh, Instagram, I was showing where uh, my friend Lance and I was doing some grinding on uh, a set of my parallels. And uh, Tab reached out to me and said that he wanted to build a uh, wooden case for those parallels. So this is the case that he made for those. I give him some dimensions and uh, he had some uh, corner sewn oak that he wanted to uh, use to build this case. And this is what he come up with right here. It's a beautiful case. And I got the parallels in there. And the way he designed this case here is that he gave me some extra room so that I could just, you know, once they're in there, I could put my finger in there and just kind of lift them out like that. All right. Uh, these are what I call the, uh, the Jones parallels, the W Jones. These, these were made by Mr. Jones. But he's also got this, uh, the centerpiece here so that, this actually can come out, okay? So just real nice looking, real nice looking woodworking right there. True craftsmanship. I love the, uh, the hinges on this, they're very, very heavy duty hinges. I know they weren't cheap either. These aren't just some little old cheapo hinges. They're designed also so that whenever you flip the lid back, it actually stops. It doesn't go back. That was one of the issues I had with the, uh, the Blake coax uh, cases. Whenever you open it up, it goes on back and then it causes the case to uh, tilt back like that. So I like that this, the hinges actually stop the, the lid from going back further. So that's just an, a nice little feature in this. So super nice case. Thank you very much, Tab. I know that he uh, really enjoys watching the videos uh, every week and uh, please give him a follow over there on Instagram. And if you're looking for uh, someone to do some high quality woodworking cab cabinet or furniture type work, please reach out to him he does beautiful work over there in his shop on his uh, on his farm and uh, thank you very much tab i love the case and i'm going to cherish this it's a nice piece to have another really cool uh, handmade gift here and uh, these come from ted mattingsley he's from shelbyville michigan and uh, this is some maple syrup that he makes himself and recently, well, probably within the past month or so, Ted had reached out to me through email and uh, he was helping a friend uh, with an estate sale up there. And uh, I believe it was a friend's father who had passed away that had a machine shop and they were trying to uh, you know, clean out the estate. There was a lot of old tooling there that they were trying to figure out what to do with. You know, just so, you know how everybody has a lot of stuff that they accumulate cutters and drills and, and machine tool accessories and uh, he had emailed me and just kind of was was asking for some advice on uh, what to do with some of that stuff maybe uh, how much to sell it for and that kind of thing and uh, 
luckily somebody else had been emailing me looking for some drill bits and I had put the two in touch and I think they had contacted each other and he was able to sell some of those drill bits. But anyway, Ted had uh, wanted to send me a gift for, uh, you know, helping him out to, uh, for helping him with that estate sale there. So he sent me these, this is some maple syrup that he, that he makes. And he says that he ages this for a year in whiskey barrels. And usually whenever he sells this, he sells out very fast. And he wanted to send me a couple bottles of it. And he says that it's excellent on vanilla ice cream. So I'm definitely going to have to try that. But um, thank you very much, Ted, for the, uh, for the homemade maple syrup right here. I'm looking forward to uh, trying it. And uh, I'm glad I could help out with your uh, friend's estate sale there. And I'm looking forward to trying the maple syrup. Thank you very much. You know, the handmade gifts that people give you are always just extra special. And those are the ones that I especially love to try to share on my channel here and give thanks to those who uh, send those in. So I have something that's actually extra special that I wanted to uh, share and uh, give thanks to that was made. And I have a painting that was made and it's a, a painting of myself right here that was made by uh, Chris Rude. And he's from Anaheim, California. This is a, a picture that Abby took of me whenever we were at Tent Rocks National Monument over in New Mexico earlier in the year during our honeymoon. And uh, Chris had uh, emailed me uh, some time back and uh, showed me a, an earlier picture of the painting and said that he was working on that and uh, asked if I, would, uh, if I would like the painting. And uh, I said, absolutely, I would love the painting. I thought that was really cool that he decided to, to make a painting. It was one of the, the pictures that I had shared on the channel there on, uh, I believe it was on Instagram where I had shared the, uh, the pictures and I also shared them over on the uh, A-Bomb Adventures channel there as well. But uh, anyway, uh, Chris, I really love the painting and Abby loves the painting too as well. So we both, uh, we both wanna extend our appreciation to it. It looks beautiful. And it's, uh, it's definitely something that I've never had the skill to be able to do artwork like this. I've, I've tried and I just, I, I just can't seem to do it. I, I seem to do better with uh, circular motions on a lathe or straight lines on a miller machine and uh, not, not brushing paint with a, a paintbrush. But uh, it really is a neat photo, uh, not photograph, but a painting. And uh, thank you very much. It really is cool. And Abby is going to hang it up in the house and so that we can enjoy it. So thank you very much, Chris. Mm -hmm.